Buy now, pay later. That concept exploded during the pandemic, but in recent months, it has proven to be the bargain shopper and retailers may have hoped for. That's right. I mean, it's not just credit. We're talking about <laughs> specifically one type of credit, but the plans uh, give shoppers what amounts to a short-term loan paid off in several interest-free installments. I know that's how I'm paying one of the exercise equipment things in my <laughs> home, and I'm hoping to do it before I owe any interest. But a new study says the practice has its downfalls, including potentially hurting a person's credit. Joining us now is Michael Tayano. He is the senior director of Fitch Ratings. So, Michael, can you explain how these buy now, pay later plans work and why they are so popular? Sure. Well, thanks for having me. Uh, the, the, the attraction for the consumer is that they're uh, relatively seamless. So you can um, do these loans on your phone. It's usually for payments, interest free, as you had indicated. Um, and it tends to align with how people get paid every two weeks. Mm -hmm. So, so um, people tend to like that. Merchants like it because it tends to increase their average ticket um, and abandonment of courts, which has been an issue for years, especially in e-commerce. I mean, and the appeal, and, and this is just from personal experience, is like, I don't owe interest rate. It's not that big of a blow to, you know, my credit card bill. And <laughs> it just makes see, things seem more affordable. But I'm very interested in the part about how we can bring your credit rating down. Please help. <laughs> Well, the problem becomes if you get overextended, right, and consumers take on too many of these buy now, pay later loans that they can't afford to pay back on time, in which case they could go delinquent and then ultimately could uh, that could get reported to the credit bureau. So that, that's where the problem potentially uh, comes in. And buy now, pay later tends to be targeted or at least the applicants tend to be more highly skewed toward subprime or, or lower income cohorts. Mm. Well, do you have advice on maybe some areas where you should not be doing the buy now, pay later? Well, I mean, I think they've traditionally or at least started out being used for lower ticket items. So I think the average is somewhere between $100 and $200 purchases. Mm. I think what you want to be just careful is those much larger ticket items that go into the thousands. Uh, of dollars and using them multiple times, I think, is where you know consumers can get into trouble. Too late, Michael. Too late. <laughs> <laughs> Especially with the exercise equipment, apparently. There's a giant treadmill in the living room. <laughs> now, how have rising prices impacted a retailer's ability to offer these uh, buy now, pay later options? Well, more and more retailers have been offering them. I think they started out more, you saw them a lot more in apparel and cosmetics, but they've broadened out into other categories, whether it be travel um, and some some groceries and things that, things of that mm -hmm. nature. Um, but I think, you know, the merchants, I think, still still want them because, like I said, it increases their, their average ticket uh, purchase price. Uh, I think consumers more and more are probably going to gravitate to them just given the inflation environment that we're in the more and more people have, have difficulty in making their monthly payments on other things, the more and more they might need a product like Buy Now, Pay Later. All right, Michael Tayano, thank you so much for breaking it all down for us. Appreciate it. Thank you.